Hi everybody, I haven't put a YouTube up for a while so I thought we'd put one up today of all the bits and bobs which I picked up at the Wimbledon boot sale you just don't know what you're going to get there and um, well today the weather wasn't very nice it was raining I didn't know whether it would have been held but we popped down there and we found some bits and bobs surprising anyway what we should start with is something that didn't work this didn't work but as I say you have to gamble what works and what doesn't work and this was a little rechargeable torch German um, there's two it has two means of being charged up if it was working either by the uh, the the uh, the car socket in the car or from the normal mains and it shows the old German plug there and funny enough this item is German made it's not Chinese but unfortunately it didn't work the piece missing and I think the other uh, battery's dead as well. So that was one item which I didn't get any joy out of. But not to worry. I've had a look. I might have a further look, but it looks like it's been physically damaged. Uh, there's no connector through to the other uh, battery feed, so it's um, it just I don't know. Either the piece has dropped out. It looks like a piece has in fact dropped out, but you can't get it, get it to work either. Anyhow, let's put that by. An item we did pick up, I, I, that I picked up there was this lovely soldering iron. Now I need another soldering iron like a hole, hole in the head. But when you see these things at boot sale, you seem to think, well, I don't know, I don't really want to leave it there. And this one's got a very fine point. It's ideal for printed circuit work where you have to get right into. It could be a bit finer and it could be cleaned up. I haven't cleaned it up, it's just as I got it. It's German, made by a company called Ursa, which is quite a good name. No, I won't see it better, better with light. Ursa, made in Germany. This item did work. It was obviously bought in Germany because it's got the uh, the German plug, German Schuko plug. Let's put the light on a bit so we can see what we're doing. Now, one German plug. It'll also fit into the French plug system because the French has a little peg that's uh, a pin that stands out on the on the wall outlet, which would fit in there, which is earth. So there's your two pins and the earth also on the side. So, a nice little sol soldering iron. I think I gave about a pound for that, so it's, um, it was money well spent. Well, I lost, I lost a bit on that um, torch, but you can't have it always. You never expected things, you know, you never got anything, you wouldn't get anything at all. Yeah, next little item we picked up was... Um, the normal 13 amp plug socket and um, it's got on there Mercury the old CE mark uh oh how am I going to get my work done for YouTube if you keep jumping up yeah we got that and what it is is actually a light dimmer and it works beautifully you've got your little knob there that you twist around and from on off switch on to maximum brilliance it works fine so you know that was a good find 
This camera has been playing up it for some unknown reason. I have a job making it focus. I don't know why. There it's three fifth. Um, it's three hundred watts max. So as long as you keep within that range, you're okay. Right. Also, compact fluorescent lamps. I must admit, I'm not as interested as those uh, as I'm on the, uh, the, the really oldie lamps. But this one turned up, and it's a name I haven't come across as yet. Turbo. Got the box there. Electronic inverter. It's on the box. I think it'll probably come out better when it comes out on the actual screen. You've got some funny name there as well. It doesn't actually say where it's made, but um, I would imagine it's made in China. Yeah, let's have a look at the actual lamp itself. It's a, a daylight. I'll show it on later as well. Brand new. There are turbo cool daylight. That always got on that as well. Forty watt. There's nothing there. There's no CE mark. There's no testing marks or anything on this, but brand new, the old spiral type. Also, oh, it's a um, Edison screw base. It's quite a nice looking base as well. It's not the, um, the horrible cheapo type. So whether this is a few years old and um, it was one that was been stored away I don't know anyhow also come down you get come on. I'm in jobs here with pussycats um, we've got this this one as well I must admit I can't really enthuse over these at all um, to my mind they're modern this is a Philips made in Poland it's either glass or plastic there's yeah, plastic well it's an SL9 comfort 9 watt 240 50 Hertz and that's got the good old bayonet cap. That turned up today. I, now what did I give for that? 50 pence I believe. And the other bulb was 75 pence so I gave him the pound and said oh keep the change. So yeah that one was say a pound and that one was 50 pence I believe. Finally, I had a very good buy. It's a telephone. If the old puss will let me get in there. Now, I remember these when they introduced them. It was in 1959. This model was introduced in 1959 and it's the 706. It was... Um, it took over from the big old Bakelite jobs, the uh, the three three twos. Um, they were not a badly made phone. Um, they cheapened them since. Now this one has the original dial, which is a lovely. Now come on, you have to go down. Go. That's okay. She's jumped down. Um, sorry about that. 
Um, yeah, this one's got the original dial, and the dial is actually dated 1959. That was when this model came out, and I was very pleased to get this because um, I've been after one of the early ones. There is a reason for it, which I'll show you. First of all, turn it over. You've got your 706L. The L means letters, and that's what's on the dial. You've got a batch sampling mark there. It actually says GPO batch sampled and a number. And there you've got PL60 stroke 2. Well, that's 1960, second month, uh, which will be February. And the PL stands for Plessy. Plessy was an electronics company uh, situated in, as far as I know, this would have been East London. Um, I'm trying to think the name of the town, Ilford or, or Ilford, some somewhere near there. But they had factories quite in quite a few places. But anyhow, that's what what the PL means, Plessy. And there was a phone which was designed by the uh, the GPO, the General Post Office, which was a forerunner of, uh, of the British Telecom. And several manufacturers made these. They're all made to more or less the same pattern. Anyway, what is interesting with this one, what I've been trying to find is one would have the genuine. Now, in there, you've got... Um, printed circuit board which I'll take out. I'm only hoping these are going to show up. Now what this is, this was like the modern idea to the phone and what it would do if someone lived say next door to the telephone exchange and someone else lived right on the exchange area or the boundary the length of wire between the two subscribers or customers was was a different length so what this did was to compensate for length of line and the bottle there little bulb is a form of thermistor or beretta it's got a filament in fact got a double filament you've got your three wires coming out of it I'm only hoping this is going to focus all right because it's looking awful at the moment that's got, um, you can even see inside there, but it's, it's just like a little, just like a little lamp. You've got a resistor there, and in that black container, there's rectifiers, a whole stack of them. And the idea is that this compensates the actual, the, uh, the amount of, of current, and it, compensates for the line length without getting too technical you turn it over good old printed circuit now one way you can put it in if you push it in that way it's not in use it's just shorted out it's just not used but if you put it in that way around the regulator comes into play and as you can see this was the first month PL Plessy, so that was made by Plessy as well. Look at the inside of the phone, you'll see those those numbers where it actually fits in. You've also got your bell, and the bell has gongs of two types, so you get like a two tone effect. The dial is a nice metal dial and that was also dated at the, at the same period of time. You've got a transformer there which is for your uh, it's an anti-side tone induction coil which is used for your speech currents and feeding back so you can um, hear hear yourself a nice large capacitor 
which is used on the ringing circuit and in the um, other uses but the mainly as a DC block for the bell because the bell works on AC when the ringing comes through Anyhow, before I finish before I drive you all to sleep I'll show you why this phone turned up there's the beautiful case turn it over it's got a blooming great crack in it well it's crack it's <laughs> not even a crack it's it's broken so that enabled me to get it at a very silly price I think I gave him four pounds for for it and four pounds for a phone which is in the, the within the components of the first year that this came out is quite a good deal and I had as I say I had been looking out for one but in particular a regulator where the bulb was clear and the reason for this is when these phones first came out if they were used during the night time that little bulb would glow it would glow either a whitish color or redder and people thought the phone was on fire and the story goes they would drop them into a bucket of cold water whether that's true or not I don't know but since then and that was very shortly after these were brought in um, they painted it so th th this was painted black so you couldn't see any, any light but this is a genuine one it's not one that I've scratched the paint off of it's a genuine clear bulb so it was a very good boot sale today anyway I'm going to finish now because um, as I say, I'll drive you all to sleep. Let me show you the handset. That's the typical handset of the 706 phone. I do a series on phones anyhow, as a lot of you know. But I thought today, rather than do them all separately, I'd put them all together. Before I go, have a little look at the ring lamps of light. That's the Philips Poland. And we'll put the other one in. And there's your other one. One's a daylight and the other's a warm white. Yeah, anyway, once again, thanks for looking. Tomorrow I'm off to um, Vintage Radio Communications um, Exhibition up in the Midlands. I'm looking forward to that. So... No, might have some other bits to show you I don't know they won't be boot sale prices but nevertheless they'll be interesting old radios old phones old lamps occasionally turn up you just don't know what's going to turn up so anyhow once again thanks for thanks for watching any questions please shout please subscribe and I'll catch you back tomorrow if I get anything good there. I've got an idea I might. Anyhow, once again, thanks for looking. Thank you.